In this video, I will tell you everything you need to know about software tested documentation in the Agile team. It doesn't really matter if you're a developer, tester, SDT, test automation engineer, and some point of time in a Agile team you will have to do some testing or work closely enough with testers. And that's the time when knowing and being able to use testing documentation can be really helpful. My name is Dadia Sasha and I used to work as a tester, I used to work as a test automation engineer and I'm working as a software developer. And in this video I will tell you what is software testing documentation and why it was so important? How Agile changed the way we use software testing documentation and how you can use testing documentation to so get the most out of your testing. I have started my testing career in 2010 and at this time the main development methodology that we were using was Rational Unified Process. Rational Unified Process would break software delivery into several iterations, but one iteration could take up to several months, and it required a lot of tests and documentation and artifacts. And why so? Well, that was pretty obvious. You do testing after several iterations before you release the product, or in the best case, you do testing after a single iteration which takes several months, and then you hopefully release the product. But if the product isn't good enough, then you can't release the product. Or if you don't test good enough, you release the product which is not ready to be released. So it was really important to do lots of planning and preparation for testing, because there would not be any other chances to fix your mistakes. In order to increase our chances to do proper testing, we would be using lots of test artifacts, and I like to think about test artifacts in a hierarchical way. So we can say that on the global scope there would be test strategy artifact and project level test plan, very important documents explaining how on earth we are going to do the testing and sometimes quality assurance for a particular project or the whole system. Let's say you can have a single test strategy document or a single project test plan for the whole Windows 10. Then there will be some iterations. There would be test plan for an iteration and test reports showing how the testing is going on for the iteration. There would be something which I call requirements scope documents, which are test cases. So for each requirement or set of requirements, you would prepare test cases that would verify that those requirements were really satisfied. And finally, bug report, we can call them local scope documents because they were showing a particular very specific problem with your software. And test plan was the most important artifact out of all, except probably test result reports and bug reports. And that is because test plan would identify when the testing is going to be started, what and how is going to be tested, when the testing is going to be stopped, what are success and fail criteria for the whole product, for the sub-module, etc. And many other really important stuff. And moreover, test plan in this old world would be formally approved by people like test manager, development lead, project manager, and sometimes some other people. Agile has changed this. Agile flavored software development methodologies are de facto standard. I think almost all the teams are using one or the other flavor of Agile these days. And in Agile, the iteration is usually from one to four weeks, with less emphasis on documentation and, of course, test documentation included. And one can also argue that we also tend to spend less energy on testing in Agile in general. So, knowing all that, why to do any test documentation in Agile team? And that's a really good question. I think that any documentation is communication. And written documentation facilitates tracking and transparency. It is really easy to forget what was discussed a couple of weeks ago, but you can always open documentation, different versions of documentation if necessary, and see 
what was going on and probably make some projections how it's going to go in the future. And in Agile, the good news is that for almost all testing activities, you would need just a single document, which is again, unsurprisingly, test plan. Agile test plan document can be broken into three main sections. For example, in the introduction, you can discuss things like what is being tested, what is the primary goal of the object under test, benefits, risks, analysis, who is developer, if it does matter, and other things. Then you can go to the test strategy and try to understand what are different test levels, what are different test techniques are going to be used to test a particular functionality, which tests are going to be automated and when, and which tests are not going to be automated at all, and why. Then you can go to test cases and checklist section, which is going to be conveniently merged with test result report. I know it may sound really confusing on this diagram, but let's have a look at an example test plan document, and I hope it all will start to make sense. So how test planning is usually done in Agile teams? Well, Agile teams are usually less formal and less effective when it comes to testing, but that's by design. Agile using different approaches to risk management. So many teams don't think about test planning as a separate activity. However, of course, they do still plan testing, even if they don't realize that. For example, techniques like Three Amigos, writing acceptance criteria, behavior-driven development, or things like executable specification are indeed test planning, or at least it looks very similar to test planning and allows you to achieve pretty much the same results. So let's have a look at the test plan example. We start with the overview section or introduction section where we give some information about the ticket number, we discuss what functionality is implemented and how we're gonna test this. Then we also mention how it was implemented, what parts of the application were changed. And when this is done, we go into the test strategy. Our test strategy is going to be influenced by the nature of the function under test and by the way the functionality was implemented. So, for example, we can expect that there will be some unit test coverage for both front end and back end code, and based on that, we spend less time on manual testing. But it can be the other way around. If we know for sure that the part of the code that was changed is not well covered by unit tests and other automated tests, we might need to do a little bit more manual testing in this case. We can do some benefits and risk analysis so we can understand how important is this functionality and adjacent functionalities which are likely to be affected by the change. How critical an issue would be there for example, if it's a payment microservice, it can be really critical if you have some issues there. But if it's something less important than that, then the issue can be less costly. And how likely there will be new issues in this functionality based on things like card filling or historical data about this functionality being notoriously brittle. And all this is necessary so you can understand how focused and thorough testing should be of particular parts of the application. And then you go to the test cases section, which essentially just a table, sometimes very scarcely detailed, like a checklist, where you just specify a scenario or a check that you want to be performed, then the status. So you basically merging test cases and test reporting in a single document. If necessary, you can break a test cases section to several sub tables based on the sub functionality, sub modules, or whatever makes sense to you. You don't need to add any unnecessary details. It's not like in a rational unified process where you had to create a lengthy document, otherwise you wouldn't just look very good. So what you need to do is to think what is absolutely mandatory to be added to the test plan and add this. For example, don't add test cases which you are not planning to perform or which are not mandatory to be passing for accepting a particular functionality. 
test plan in Agile is not a collection of test ideas. It is a plan of what you are going to do in order to say that a particular functionality or story, if you will, is tested. One particular thing which might be necessary for your Agile test plan is understanding of what kind of regression is likely to occur when you implement the functionality under test. And if it is necessary to add any manual or additional cases for regression testing, in ideal world, all of your regression tests will be automated and will be running automatically with the pipeline, so you won't need to think about this. But we all know that we are not always living in ideal world, so you might need to add some regression tests into your test plan. In any case, you need to be pragmatic. If some parts of the test plan are always or almost always the same on your particular project, it's okay to omit them. If some information doesn't make sense to be added, don't add it. So that's basically it. Adding such simple and short test plans to the stories I'm working on proved to be very important and helped me to avoid lots of silly bugs even when I was working as a developer. And if you're a tester or test automation engineer on a project, I think adding a test plan for each story you're working on can be what makes a difference between subpar testing and outstanding testing in a agile team.